Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video regarding the Cardena water valve. Now, uh, I wanted to do this upgrade for a while uh, since there's a ugly 9 volt wire going underneath the door uh, to power this device because it doesn't have any batteries. So, today we're going to convert this uh, to a solar powered device, well hopefully. You can gonna need a couple of things. One of them is, of course, the uh, the valve, the electronic valve. Now I've already covered that in the previous video, so uh, go and watch it. And you also need an ESP uh, 12F. Now not this development board, but only the chip. Uh, you're going to need a H uh, bridge, the L289N. Uh, you're going to need a, a lithium battery charge controller, a boost converter, of course 18650s or other lithium batteries, solar panel, some uh, connectors, uh, a few uh, nuts and bolts, and the most important part, a 3D printed case to hold everything. Now the file for the case uh, will be in the description, uh, so I'm going to move this out of the way because we do need to prepare the case first. Now make sure that you are uh, handling the batteries with care, so don't just throw them around uh, if you don't need them, because uh, if the positive and the minus terminals touch each other, that's not really good. Now, it just came off the printer, so we gotta remove the uh, support materials. I designed this case uh, myself, and this is only the second print, and the previous print uh, actually was uh, a success. It, uh, it fitted, it fitted perfectly. Remove the Cut for the USB. Now I um, uh, added a USB cutout slot for the charge controller just as a uh, uh, emergency uh, power source. Now basically, this whole thing needs to be removed. And it is very satisfying to actually do so. So you can basically just rip apart like this. I've got a oh no, I damaged it here. That's a shame. Or I actually got a very nice uh, figure to play around with or something. Don't know. Now that's that part. Now there's also support material on the inside here, and that needs to go too. But that's a little uh, a little bit different. A little bit. Harder. So I just just break it and dragging it up with the screwdriver. Flat. Then then just pull it. It uh, needs to go completely, so no uh, leftovers are allowed. Oop. that. Now you should be left with a reasonably flat surface and if you grab your holder, insert the two wires into the hole and press it down and it should fit perfectly. Now you can see the, the wires coming out of here. Let's 
Get the sport material out of the way. Throw it into version 1. And of course, if you grab the whole valve, you can just click it onto here. And it fits. Nice. It just, just shoved over the top, which is nice. Now I've also added some, uh, some standoffs for the solar panel so that it doesn't sink in all the way. Now the first thing that uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to completely disassemble this because this was the previous setup that I, uh, that I used it for. And I think I made photos of it. I hope I did remove the, the glue. And I um, made some holes or some threads inside this thing for the H-bridge to be mounted on. Now the threads aren't 100% centered. Where's my... Oh, here. Yeah. So don't stress them too much. But you can just screw in... Ooh. Screw in the H bridge like this. All right, it just it should just screw in. There you go. So be very careful with the screws. Also make sure that they're not too deep. Because then they will just push out the uh, push up the uh, threads and you need to print another one. And it takes quite some time and plastic actually to print these. Okay. I think it's basically enough for this thing is to keep it uh, from jumping around inside the case. So I think this is uh, pretty okay. Maybe I can screw in this one but not the other one because that's misaligned. I think it's better to screw in one side only. Yeah, so screw in one side only, that's a bit of a design mistake that Fusion 360 uh, wasn't able to perfectly center the generated threads. And to be really honest, I didn't feel like changing that. Because, say, But this is just a matter of finding the thread and waiting for the thing to grip.
Alright, that was secured today using the other screw. Oh, come on. Now the screw holes aren't perfectly aligned. That's the only downside of this thing. Maybe there are more downsides, but we don't uh, come across them. Since I just started assembling uh, it. Nice. Now, of course, this is plastic. It's PLA, so it's going to be kind of brutal. So don't stress it too much. Now, I need my phone for this. Because uh, you basically want to um, uh, watch the other video I made. As that showed and explained how this whole system is working. So we are going to connect the red wire to the out one terminal. And the black wire to the out two terminal. And now your H-bridge is connected. Okay, so now we need the battery charge controller. Oh no, the uh, boost controller. Uh, this is very important to do it uh, beforehand. Uh, the Gardena valve needs uh, 9 volts to operate, not 12, as uh, written down on the H-bridge. Um, so I'm going to set up my multimeter in order to provide a well, let's do 3.7 volt signal so that we can adjust the output voltage beforehand. So insert it into the connectors that we are going to cut away. Uh, 3.7 3.8 also good. So as you can see it's at 13.7 volts. Now this was because I uh, used this thing to charge a uh, 12 volt battery but we're going to drop it to 9. Now we don't need a um, another regulator. Well, we do. Um, I will explain it in a bit. Oh, that's five already. Switch to the other. Ah, oh, that's perfect, that's spot on, 9.07. Uh, now we do need a um, 3 volts regulator. And I didn't get that one yet. So let me grab one. Or is this 3 volts regulator? No, this is a 5 volt, I think. Yeah, that's five minutes. So, three volt regulator, and somewhere in this mess. P12F should be hidden. Now the uh, L289N features a 5 volt internal regulator. 
um, we are not going to use that uh, since that's a waste of energy and um, where's the other ah. and we can turn it off by removing a jumper which I will do in a moment now we're going to um, I think it's efficient to um, I think it's efficient to connect it to the battery output. So the first pin is the input, the middle pin is the ground and the last pin is the output. to need a couple of wires so let me grab some wires we're going to need three for these them to be heat shrink and oh, that's four okay well we can just connect uh, two wires to ground then So, solar iron, solar, let's get this started. Is it still in focus? Let me try out of focus again. Is this working? Apply some solar to the regulator's legs. This is the input pin. Let me use a helping hand for this. I think that's a little bit better. That's one. Let's cover it immediately. Heat shrink. There you go. Now twist the two ground wires. to the middle pin I think I'll need to add some solar
nice. And then shove this one over. Heat shrink it. And the final one, the fourth wire on the third connection. Solder it, put the hinge rack on top of it and crimp it down. Now you've got your voltage uh, regulator connected. It's now time to connect it to the charge controller. And I've left that one over here. So make sure that you've got a charge controller that uh, has connected uh, all of the wires. So input uh, positive, negative, battery positive, negative, and output positive and negative. And you removed this uh, LED. So the one that's the closest to the USB connector. Since that is the charging LED. And when it's charging, we basically don't want that LED to be on since it draws too much power. Not too much, it draws power that otherwise would have uh, got converted into battery power. So, alright. This is the output. Crimp the connectors, the cables. This one is a little bit too long now. And solder them onto the terminals of your boost converter. Like so, that's one, and that's two, give them a little bit of a pull, now grab your regulator, your voltage regulator, separate the first two wires from the other two, and solder the First pin to the V in and the other pin to the V in minus. So you basically want it like this. Add some solder to the uh, to the pins first. Correct orientation, yes. Solder them, so that's one. That's two. So now you've connected your 3.3-volt uh, voltage regulator to the uh, output of the battery the battery uh, charge and protection circuit. Can remove the helping hand now. So you've got this right now. Battery charge controller and protection, voltage uh, booster, voltage regulator, and output terminals. Um, now we want the output terminals to be gone. So we are going to cut them, oop, this is not the wire cutter. We are going to cut them around here. Then strip them like so. Twist them together. 
not the wires. Just twist the wire strands together. Pre-tin them. And the same for the other one. Like that. Now grab your uh, holder, your case, and if you look closely on the uh, the edge bridge, you can see that this pin is labeled as 12 volts. Now we're going to apply 9 volts to it. This is ground, and this is 5 volts. So as you can see, we need to flip it. So the black wire goes into the 12 volt terminal like so and the black wire needs to go into the ground terminal like so so that's hooked up Nicely. Now there are a few more things that need to be hooked up, and one of them is, of course, the battery. But I'm going to do that uh, as the last one. Look, if we place the charge controller where it belongs, you can uh, insert a charging cable into it, and it goes like this, so no water is able to drip into it. Now we still need to connect the solar panel. And I'm going to do that with these two things. Now it's very handy because you uh, put one of the wires inside here and close it. Now it's stuck and they're electrically connected to each other. Like that, it's stuck now. And grab your solar panel and insert it. Insert those positive and negative wires as well into it. And if we're lucky, we should see a output voltage on the battery connectors and we do of 0 0.3 volts and if we turn off the light there should be yeah so the the system is working obviously it's not um, getting enough sunlight to um, power anything but it is working. So, organize a little bit of the wiring. Now I'm going to do a quick search for another pair of those connection blocks. Because I think I want the battery to be um, easily removable as well. So I'll be right back.
Now I don't have those anymore, but I do have another solution. So I'm going to remove these and save them for the battery. And the other solution for connecting the solar panel is this. With screw terminals. So that's, uh, yeah, that's a real advantage. So you can just screw in the wires into a single connection uh, jack and then plug the jack in and it works well it should work Charge control connected. I'll connect the battery terminals to them. Minus goes here. Plus that goes here. Now, of course, the wires for the solar panel are way too long. So I think I'll be cutting them, but not right now. And now, voila, you can just put them in. And if we put on some light and measure the battery output again, which are these two. Yeah. Oh, there's. 0.8 volts on it so that's good that's connected but we'll disconnect it for now and we're going to use them to connect the battery since that's of course the main target of this project now I'm um, quite concerned about the ESP since uh, it, well, it's going to be deep sleeping, but then the response time of the home assistant switch will be about 20 minutes. So I'm not really sure how to um, fix that. And as you can see, I think something might have went kaboom. And I'm not sure why. But hey. Let's measure the um, voltage on here. Yeah, that's not, uh, not good. But nothing is. is Warm really. What's the input voltage of this boost converter at 0. Point, no, that's not, not good. What's the battery voltage? Yeah, the battery voltage is plenty. So the device, the battery protection circuitry, just turned itself off. I'm not sure why, but it just did. Let's see. It went on for a little moment and then it went off. 
you couldn't see it, but I'm sorry about that. Mm. It might have got something to do with the 3.3 volt regulator. But it's not hot or anything, so... Let's see what the output voltage of the regulator is. Basically nothing. So why is this thing turned off? Now we can just do this. And then it works. And it doesn't shut down. This is not getting warm. This is not getting warm. Not getting warm. Not getting warm, so. Uh, this is kind of getting warm now. And this is not delivering a voltage. So I think I flipped the connections. Oops. Let me check that. Yep, I did completely mess up the wiring, but completely. Or haven't I? Yes, the middle pin is the um, five volt pin, so we need to flip these two wires. I think I'll just screw this off. Like so. This go like that. And if we now put it back, screw it right. I 
and connect the battery. Minus, oh, positive first, then minus, positive, and the minus, uh, the light should stay on now. It doesn't, because of. Why is it working? Why isn't it working? Da 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 da. There we go. So, what's the output voltage of this thing now? Need those two. Come on, three point five, which is okay. If we draw some, draw some load, then it uh, should go back down. So that's working. This isn't getting hot. This isn't getting hot anymore too. So yeah, now it's time to figure out the pins of the ESP12F. So oh, for just uh, for this far, I declare this project as a success. It's capable of switching it on off, obviously, um, and it's in direct sunlight. I will post a photo of how it's mounted on the screen, so you can uh, watch that yourself. So I hope you like this uh, upgrade on the previous uh, watering computer. If you find this video interesting. Please share it with your friends and uh, let me know if you uh, also made this project. Alright, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye! Thanks for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and make sure to leave a comment down below. You can also share this video with your friends if you think they will like it too. See you next time!